Okay, a lot of you that watch my channel know that lately I've been spending a lot of time with my tit sauce, which is a clone of the actual Browning High Power, like the one you see here, or the one you sort of see here. Uh, you sort of see a Browning High Power here. Uh, ever since I've been messing with that gun, my actual Browning High Power has been sitting disassembled on my workstation here. And there's a reason for that. There's actually two reasons for that. One, I was waiting to see which parts I left on my tit sauce and which parts I could bring back over to this because I took all the parts off this originally, put it on the tit sauce. But since then, I have replaced a lot of those parts with parts that I've gotten from uh, BH Spring Solutions. So a lot of the parts can go back onto this gun now. And now that I've got all the parts ready to go back onto this gun, there's still one other thing I've been waiting to do before I put this back together and I'm going to do that now. I don't know how well you all can see it here, but I put a little ding on the frame here when I was taking this apart. Put a little ding in the finish here. And uh, I did that because I didn't take the time to tape everything off. And there's a reason I didn't take the time to tape everything off. I hate this glossy black finish. I just hate it. I'm sure some people would love this finish, but I'm just not a fan of it. It looks like someone took like a high gloss spray paint and sprayed it on really heavy. So I'm gonna strip this finish off and redo the frame and the slide before I put the gun back together. So the first thing I'm gonna to need to do is take the frame and the slide outside and bead blast them. And once I get that done, I'll just refinish them and then I'll put the gun back together. But like I said, first, we gotta go bead blast these. I don't know if you can hear me, but some people asked me last time, don't I have a blasting cabinet? Well, I do, but blasting cabinets are only necessary if you wanna recover your media. If you're doing it outside like this and you don't care if you keep the stuff or not, just go ahead and just blast with your little sandblaster and don't worry about it. Okay, I've got them bead blasted down here to where they are in the white, as you might say, or just bare, bare metal. So now that I've got them bead blasted down, they got a nice smooth finish on them. I'm gonna go ahead and clean them up with some uh, 4.0 synthetic, synthetic, can't talk tonight, steel wool and some alcohol and get them good and clean. And then I'm gonna hang them and coat them with my Wheeler's Ceramic Coat. As you may notice, I went ahead and left the sights on this. They had that same gloss black coating on it. And I don't know about you, if it's not a good bluing, I think gloss black just looks cheap. So I just left them on, bead blasted them along with a gun, and they will get uh, coated with the wheelers just like the rest of the gun, and they'll still match the gun like they did before. Okay, as you can see, I've got them hung here from the ceiling with coat hangers. And I have put one coat on them, uh, both sides here. I don't know how well you can see from that side, but uh, the coats are on them. I will probably give them two more coats. As you can see, if you get up close, these coats aren't exactly like all covering coats. I do it in really light coats. And then uh, I let it dry 30 minutes between, and then I put another coat on. It'll probably take about three coats, but once I have three coats on it, I'll be ready to stick them in the oven. Okay, they are in the oven and it is uh, baking. Uh, don't look at my dirty oven, but they're in there, trust me. I haven't cleaned the oven in a while. Never used the oven, really. So, I haven't cleaned it in a while. Okay, while that's baking, I wanted to answer a couple of questions I know I'm going to be asked here. One, some people are going to say, are you baking that in your oven? Don't you know that's dangerous? You're going to be exposed to that stuff. Well, any secondary exposure you'll get from this, from it being baked in your oven without actually touching any of the surfaces, is a thousand times less than what you're gonna get from just applying it. So if you're afraid of that, then don't apply it either because you're gonna get more uh, exposure just putting it on it. The other question is gonna be how durable is it? Well, I can't give you an exact figure on how durable it is. There's no way to really quantify that. But this gun right here, I refinished uh, a while back and then I proceeded to carry it for about two to three weeks after I refinished it. And as you can see here, it still looks like a new finish on there. So even after being carried for a few weeks, it held up really nicely, even on the end of the gun. So it's pretty durable. Uh, is it as durable as the factory finish? I don't know. That factory finish on that gun was amazingly durable. Uh, it scratched easily and it looked cheap with the high gloss, but boy, when I was bead blasting that off, it took forever to get that off. So I doubt this is as strong as that, but I can't really complain since this has held up so well. And since it's matte, it doesn't show abrasions as easily as that uh, high gloss surface on the gun originally did. So I'm gonna have to say it's pretty strong.
Okay, it is finished, and I don't know how well this comes across on uh, camera here, but this finish is so much better than the old finish. This just looks so much nicer. That old finish was so glossy and just nasty looking. This has a nice smooth matte, uh, kind of a satiny, almost pearlescent finish to it. Just looks a lot better. So now all I gotta do is put this back together. And you all have watched me put together a gun like this one so much lately, I'm not gonna bore you with everything of putting it back together. But let's go ahead and put it back together and see how it looks. Okay, it is finished and I can't really tell you here how much better this finish looks. Can't really put it into words. I don't know if it comes across on camera, but it's just so much nicer. It's kind of a satiny matte black, if that makes any sense to you. And it's so much better than that high gloss, the kind of cheapy looking black that was on here before. Never did like that finish. So I have to say this was well worth the effort. And for the sake of full disclosure here, uh, it was a little bit of an effort because, not because of how hard it was to put the finish or anything on, but because I kept screwing things up. Uh, first off, I went to ex uh, replace the extractor here, and I had forgotten that I took the extractor from this gun, put it on my tit sauce, because it's a better extractor, it's better metal. So when I was trying to put the tit sauce extractor on this gun, the tit sauce extractor is not cut for a spring for the sear bar, because it doesn't use a spring for the sear bar, it's an older design, so it wouldn't go in. So I had to order another extractor from uh, BH Spring Solutions. So I got that, and then I went to put the gun together, and then I couldn't find my sear bar anywhere. The little bar that actually goes through the sear here and holds it in place. Not the, the roll pin, but the sear bar. And that's important because what I did first is I ordered the sear roll pin, which is for the sear bar, uh, first. And I got that, and then I realized my mistake, and then I had to order the right part and get it all put together. I don't know what happened to the original sear bar. It just, the, the solid pin, it just, uh, not the sear bar, but the, the sear pin, it just disappeared. I think the, the gun gnomes got it, the gun parts gnomes, because I'm starting to believe those things really exist, because I lose parts like crazy. They'll just disappear. I, I lost a whole gun the other day for like 15 minutes, couldn't find it. So... It wasn't as easy to put back together as I make it look in this video, but once I got all the parts and put it back together, it was definitely worth it because the gun looks so much better now. I even got my John Moses Browning uh, grips on it from BH Spring Solutions now that they actually gave me as a gift, so that I, I actually appreciate. But it just looks so much better now. I actually whited the sights back in, so they're back to being sights again, but it's just so much better now. Even with my greasy fingerprints on it, it still looks good. So, you know, if you're out there and you're thinking about refinishing a gun, but you're like, oh, it's just so hard and it's so difficult and, you know, I'm not going to do it right. That's a bunch of garbage. It's not hard. These spray-on, uh, bake-on finishes are easy to apply. They're very durable. Like I said, the one I have on my SIG has lasted for quite a while. So I have no problem with them durability-wise. And here's the great thing. Carry it for a while. If it starts to wear to the point where now you're worried about corrosion or, or wear on your slide or your frame or whatever, you just recoat it. It's so easy to do. So as far as recoating guns, it's easy. The Cerakote, the Ceramicotes, they're easy. You don't need special setups. You don't need any really special tools. If you've got an air compressor, you can bead blast it all down. And if you don't have an air compressor, there's ways to chemically strip the finishes. But you know, for if you've got an air compressor, if you don't have one, you know, a cheap pancake compressor at uh, Home Depot is, is really inexpensive and the actual bead blasters themselves cost about $9 to $18 depending on which one you get, the little handheld uh, blaster. So there's no excuse to not refinish your guns if you're wanting to do it. You don't have to worry about not being able to or it being too difficult for you because it's a really easy process and like I said, in the end, it really makes your guns look a lot nicer.